Hi, my name is Dr. Brian Habis. I'm an endodontist in St. Charles, Illinois. I've been practicing endo for the past 11 years. I graduated from St. Louis University in 2009. I've also been a general wave user since April of 2018. So I decided to invest in general wave in 2018 because as I have <clears throat> progressed over the years, I've become a more conservative shaper of teeth. And uh, I was concerned with the conservative shaping of the canals about what I was leaving behind. And so at that time, General Wave was starting to gain some traction. And as I looked into it, I thought that would be a, a great fit for me to be able to clean these canals, which I was trying to <clears throat> keep intact and not uh, change the anatomy profoundly uh, in hopes that I could retain the structural stability of the teeth. So in April of 2018, I brought Genoive into my practice. And one of the reasons why was for cases like this, and in this case particular, which uh, I got to treat the very first week that I had gentle wave. Before I had gentle wave, I saw this patient, his name's Kevin, who came to me November 29th, 2016. Kevin's tooth number 19 had been previously treated by another endodontist in my town and came to see me for a second opinion. So I was able to look at Kevin's case, take a cone beam, decipher that there was an untreated canal in the distal root, discuss the case with him. And at that time I had recommended that maybe he could go back to the treating endodontist to have this redone because uh, it was not done too far uh, in the past. And maybe they would help to, or maybe this would help to um, allow them to fix the mistake. However, he declined and wanted me to treat the case, seeing the technology that I had uh, in my office at the time, which was just microscopes and cone beams. So, so whatever the case, you could see that there is an asymmetric root filling in the distal root. The distal buccal canal had not been treated. I felt like the mesial roots were treated well, so I decided to do a selective retreatment in this case and only retreat the distal root. So you can see the amount of bone loss Kevin had on the distal root. Uh, it probed to the apex. He would have occasional swelling and pain, and it was an annoyance for Kevin. So <clears throat> January 24th, 2017, he waited for his insurance benefits to renew and came to see me. I quickly found the untreated distal buccal canal inside the root, worked my files down to the end of the tooth. At that time, I was a multi-visit endodontist treating teeth uh, using calcium hydroxide intracanal medicament on almost every case that I treated really happy with how this case looked because when I put the calcium hydroxide in there, not only did I get the uh, additional canal inside the distal root, but there was also some other anatomy that I did not know was present, looking like there was three or four portals of exit in that distal root. So I thought this is a typical case. And so we continued on. March 1st, 2017 came about, and this is the completion date uh, of initial retreatment of the tooth. You can also see the midroot, there's a little splash of sealer there. So there's a lateral canal in there. Looks like there's at least three POEs on this angle radiograph here. And at that time, Kevin had no symptoms, swelling had gone down and he was happy. So we finished the case. We fast forward to September 11th, 2017. So at this time, he called and said he was having the same issues that he had previously. So he called him back in, took an x-ray, and we found that there was no healing present in this case. And with the looks of the radiograph, I thought for sure this case would have healed up. However, it didn't. So <clears throat> I stood behind my work and decided to retreat the case. So September 21st, 2017, we took out the gutta percha, placed fresh calcium hydroxide into the canals, and 
<clears throat> saw if we could get healing in the case. We didn't. December 20th, 2017 came about. He had no obvious radiographic healing. The symptoms that he was experiencing were still intermittent with his pain and swelling and the tooth just never felt right. So we cleaned things out again. January 22nd, 2018, did it again. At this time, I was working larger files, uh, patent in the case, trying to initiate some bleeding, something change, have something change in this tooth to reverse course and get things to heal. Did not. April 3rd, 2018 had come about and he was due to see me for another calcium hydroxide change. You could see there was really no change in the radiographs at this point either. It just so happened that oh, this April 3rd, uh, a week prior, I had uh, made the decision to officially commit to buying Genowave and had signed the contract. So I knew that Genowave was in the process of coming to my office. So I told him about it and April 3rd came about it and he was getting tired of coming to my office and having problems with this tooth. So we said, all right, this is why I purchased the machine. Let's see what it can do. So with the trainer in the office, we discussed what should be done. And he recommended that I take out the calcium hydroxide in the tooth and fill the case and seal it up. And that is as clean as I could ever get the canal system. So I was a little hesitant to do that because it was a complete reversal of how I had been treating Kevin's case as well as all the other cases in the past. But <clears throat> I gave in to their uh, recommendations. I used Genowave to clean out the calcium hydroxide completely in the canal system. At that point, I saw bleeding inside the canals, which prior to that point, I had never seen before. We sealed the case with gutta percha and AH plus sealer, and then Kevin was on his way. I had not heard from Kevin <clears throat> for a long time, and then we decided to call him back. So April 18th, 2018 came around, and we recalled him for a cone beam image. And you could see on those top images that the coracle bone had definitely improved. It wasn't perfect, but it was getting better. And it looked to me that it was obvious that things were getting better. And even more importantly, it was obvious to Kevin because he had no symptoms with his tooth, no more pain, no more swelling, no more annoyance for him. So we felt like we were on the road to recovery. Then just uh, a couple of weeks ago, March 17th, 2001, he was gracious enough to come back to my office and take another cone beam. And here's what the case looked like at that point. So it looks like there's continued, continued healing, at least of the cortical plate. He's happy, he's not had any more symptoms. So at this point, we're three years past our general wave usage and he still has his tooth in his mouth and he is happy to have that. And this is what the case looked like uh, the other day compared to our preoperative view. So we could see we've uh, almost complete distal bone loss uh, Originally, and then as of a couple of weeks ago, it looks like there is not complete he healing. There's still a small finding apically. However, <clears throat> again, the tooth is asymptomatic and we will check it again in a year, in a year to see if we have any changes uh, and improvement in the health of Kevin's tooth. This is another case that we <clears throat> treated at our office uh, in the early days. This is a patient, Larry, who's an older gentleman. And he came to see me because I had the technology and found the video of, Genowave, of the Genowave procedure on my website. So when he came in, he knew about it and wanted to have that uh, performed on his tooth. So preoperatively, you could see the cone beam image. There was some erosion of the buccal plate there. And that's how he presented. At this time, I was gaining confidence in Genowave and making a transformation of my two-visit model practice to a one-visit model. And I was explaining to the patients and hopefully, uh, and hoping that we could do this case in one visit like many have had gone, had gone previously. So this is Larry, uh, the first day that we saw him. And this is what the cone beam looked like. And here's what my access looked like. So it was 
interesting to me is that the MB1 and MB2 were very discernible inside his tooth. I was able to shape the MB2 only a few millimeters in the tooth, uh, and I could never get any hand files past that point. So I spent most of this first appointment trying to get my files down the case, uh, down this uh, route like I had done for years before and was never able to do so. So at that point, I was getting to the end of the appointment. Larry was getting tired. I was getting tired. So we closed things up and we saw him back about a month later. So hopeful, we were hopeful that we could get down the canal at the next visit. We couldn't. However, at this next visit, we said, all right, we've got the machine. Let's run Genowave. So we ran Genowave and I filled the case. And this was really one of the first times that I saw the power of what uh, Genowave was able to do. So without getting any files into the MB2 system, I was able to clean it out using Genowave and whatever pathways commuted to that system from the main mesial buccal canal. And we cleaned things out using Genowave. I filled it and I took the off angle radio radiograph. I was really blown away at what I saw there. And I showed Larry and he was happy with how things looked, but he was the type of patient who definitely wanted to make sure things were improving. So we can compare our pre-op cone beam here with the erosion of the cortical plate. And then here was the cortical plate at a one year recall. So things had healed. Here are some cone beam images of the healing preoperatively and at the one year recall. So it's not completely healed at this point. Again, he's an older patient, about 80 years old, but the uh, healing is apparent and evident in these cases and in, in these uh, images. So here's one image here. <clears throat> here's another image here. And you can kind of see the uh, communication between the MB1 and MB2 systems there. And the findings have decreased in size as bone has filled in. Another view here of Larry's case. And again, I don't think I would be able to do this case nearly as well, nor get as good of healing as we see without the use of Genoa. So now I've incorporated this into my practice and use it on every case that I can in the hopes that I get more and more cases like this that show healing, especially in cases where I could not mechanically clean the canal system, or even if I could clean the canal system like we did in Kevin's case, I couldn't get things to heal. So these are two cases that I have found Genowave has aided in allowing me to retain the natural dentition for my patients. Uh, as an aside, there's also an ongoing study of these refractory type cases like Kevin, and hopefully we have more data on these cases as time goes on as these cases build, and we're finding that the difference maker appears to have been Genoa for these cases. Thank you very much.